Mistakes. <laughs> Mistakes were made. That can be the title. I think also this is a good lesson of if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. In this episode, we're going to make some great progress on the build and also learn from a setback. So seeing a box that big with flight chops written on it, it it's kind of surreal. Like I started a YouTube channel five years ago. And now we're building an airplane. So the fuselage kit just arrived. It was a much bigger box. I think we knew it was going to be a big box, but it was a bigger box than we expected. We actually took delivery of the fuselage the same weekend we had the event where AOPA visited with their RV-10. We were given Warbird rides for the public. We actually invited people to learn how to build working in the hangar between Warbird rides. And oh yeah, we also flew out a contest winner to get to fly the Warbird of her choice. So a lot happened in that one. If you missed it, definitely check it out. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to have so many community members present while we pulled this thing off the truck. If he's going this way, it's too wide. Yeah. Why don't we move the mule and we'll just put it basically where the mule is right now. Ironically, the box is the heavy part. What's in it is not that heavy. So seeing a box that big with flight chops written on it, it it's kind of surreal. Like I started a YouTube channel five years ago. And now we're building an airplane. Like I'm here because of the YouTube channel. I wouldn't have known these people. So this whole thing is all about the community. So it's really exciting to literally be building a community built airplane around the flight chops project. Like that is an airplane. Like previously what we got was a box full of flat pieces of metal and it was kind of almost anticlimactic. We brought it in with the same truck. The tail kit, it was just a flat little box. It was almost kind of funny. It's like, what did we just get? <laughs> what did we get? But that is obviously a piece of an airplane. The energy is palpable, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's quantifiable how excited everybody is about this. This is really cool. It's all just kind of coming together. All right, so we can separate them on the bandsaw. So after the dust settled from the event, it was down to work. Some of the parts come sort of connected together, so you need to use the bandsaw to cut the metal tabs that have them connected together. Then the next step is to deburr everything. That's something that you might be familiar with if you've seen the previous episode, so we won't get into great detail about deburring in this one. But it's something that all builders get pretty familiar with. It's a major part of the process that you just have to do. All right, so uh, these are the inlet thingy doies for the cabin fresh air. You need to trim to this line. It's kind of a satisfying thing to watch. The belt sander takes all the excess off. And the same thing for this, just here, just trim that. Okay, so we're at the point where the tail kit is almost finished. That's kind of it right there. The fuselage is here. So now what we've been doing is deburring all the new parts and we're getting ready to mate the tail kit to the fuselage kit. This is deja vu all over again, deburring. <laughs> Never ends, huh? Well, eventually it is, but this is the boring part. Our deburring, our favorite activity. YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. I've done an F-01447-R. Done. Ready for the done pile. A unique thing that we're gonna have to deal with today is that this is our first experience with a quick build kit. We'd already done the tail kit, but there's not a quick build available in the tail or the empennage kit. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how the devil we're gonna do this audit, you know, from seven or eight different prints. Well, I guess we just go from the beginning, right? And just say that looks done, that looks done, and we try to yeah. account for the rivets yeah. and... So kind of like when you get a normal kit, you have to do an inventory of all the parts that you receive with a quick build. 
It's mostly done, so what you have to do is essentially figure out what's been done. But it's not all done, and that's what the parts that we're preparing are for. So we need to figure out where we have to start. Okay, forward, mid, fuse, side structure. Okay, so what we're doing here is Perry and I are auditing the instructions for the fuselage because we have the quick build, so as you can see, it's pretty much done. So we're gonna go through, make sure all the steps have been accomplished, make sure we understand what got done, and then know where we need to pick it up to finish the fuselage. So this is a uh, uh, seat, seat support structure here. This, this big piece here, that supports the uh, roll bar that's gonna go across. Yep. Looks like it's all there, and all good. There are no dedicated quick build fuselage instructions. I called in to ask and they clarified with me at the, uh, what's it called, builder assist when you call in? Builder support. Builder support. So you call in and you can get all kinds of really cool real time help. So they just kind of explained to me really what it comes down to is they didn't publish a second set of documents dedicated to the quick build. So we need to go through the standard instructions figure out what's been done, make sure it's been done correctly, which I'm sure it has, but also just make sure we understand what's been done. As builders, we're supposed to know basically the inside and outside of the whole airplane. Right, and the, uh, the idler bracket for uh, for the elevator control is in place. This, this center section is the hardest, you know, one of the hardest places, uh, one of the hardest sections of the airplane to build because of the number of ribs and the proximity uh, of each rib to the other. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of rivets in here because basically this supports uh, the payload, right? Other than the, other than the gas tanks, which the wing support, this whole section supports the load of the airplane, you know, including the wings, the tail, everything is transferred, you know, to the main spar right there. Yeah. So the baggage, you, you got to have a lot of wings to support like a hundred pounds worth of baggage in here. You gotta have a lot of, of uh, ribs in here to support the passengers. Yeah. So this is the main load-bearing member of the whole aircraft right here. This is what we've just audited. This is what we have left to do, most likely. Everything now is going forward to what we have to still do. How much labor would you estimate was done in the quick build in this pile of stuff? Well, when I first saw the box, I figured there's six months of work there's six months worth of work in this box and I think I'm pretty close. If I looked at my builder log, I would be surprised if it was anything less than six months because there's a lot of work in it. These are the pieces that we're gonna be putting into the uh, for forward fuse. I can see two, three weeks worth of work. Once we finish the audit and we're certain that we know where to pick it up, Perry gleefully marked the instructions with a Sharpie. <laughs> yes, Start here. <laughs> Boom. Okay. So Perry and I just finished auditing the uh, instructions. I hadn't looked at my forum post from last night yet. I figured I would do it first and then see what other people said. And sure enough, they came to the same conclusion we did, which is we start at section 30, but it's good to audit and be very familiar with everything else. So again, this is a perfect example of the community being so great. It's not as daunting as it might seem to do this stuff, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's an awesome community, both right here locally, online, and at Vans. Uh, I'm feeling really great about where we're at here. This kid has already sold another one right here in Windsor. I heard that, yeah. It's happened, yeah. yeah. Uh, Glenn Martin uh, flew out to uh, Oregon uh, the week before last with his wife. And uh, they, they, did this the, they did the test flight and he ordered the empanage kit on the spot. And him seeing us build this one has inspired it? Oh, he's here every morning. Every morning. How do you do this? How do you do that? You know, oh yeah. <laughs> so this is Glenn. He's got a Tiger Moth, a Wacko, what else have you got here? That's it. Okay, but now uh, you've got a RV-14. And this, watching us build, kind of inspired you to... Uh, certainly watching this and how neat the kit is certainly helped uh, help cement my decision. So are you going quick build or what are you going to do? Quick build. Yeah. Yeah. And you've already got the tail, it just showed up? Just showed up yesterday, did the inventory, Very five cool. and a half hours. So our next step is priming all the new parts. We can uh, set up the airlines and the booth to prime and uh, get the parts out there and have at it. We'll dress you up in your uh, white suit and sure. mask. And... <laughs> All right, that's good. Well, let's, uh, let's everybody grab stuff and we'll get out there. We'll shoot 
screw that and let it sit for five minutes because it'll flash off in five minutes. Yeah. And uh, then we'll turn it and hit it again. Okay. I'm one of the bad guys in ET. I think this is a Perry size suit though, it's a little. Uh, so what's cool here is that they've got this awesome dedicated facility where they have a paint booth built and ready to go. I think a lot of builders have to find a way to create this type of space in their own build facility. You don't need a ton of space to do an RV, but we're kind of lucky to have this dedicated paint booth standing by whenever we need it. So while Perry and I were sort of getting the stuff ready, Dennis came out and laid out all the parts so that they're right ready to go to just easily spray them all and then wait a few minutes and then flip them over and spray the other side. Yeah. It's supposed to be low VOC, but uh, you don't like to mess with it. The thinner the coat, the, the better it adheres. So you don't want a lot. You just want to come up with an olive drab blush on it. That's it. So it's pretty much required equipment to have pretty good paint gun, eh? Like, you, you, what's the workaround if you didn't own something like this? It sure makes, it sure makes it easier, man. Like, you can't buy this stuff in spray cans, right? The primer? Mm. Is that Varsol, or what is that stuff? Oh, it's a, a, special. a special reducer, you yeah. What happens next is an interesting case of expectation bias. Perry's done this before, so even though you can tell he's not entirely happy, he kind of continues. But I'm looking at this with fresh eyes because I've never done it before, so I can sort of tell something's wrong. I think we're having trouble getting the gun adjusted to atomize properly. See if we can fix that, I don't know. Well, you can see Perry's tuning it and then testing it. When Perry finished tuning the gun, it was my turn to go in there and do the work. But I didn't flip the parts over and do the second side. I just decided something wasn't right and we needed to take a closer look before proceeding to go any farther. This isn't right. This is terrible. It's so dusty. Dennis came in and agreed with me that something wasn't right, so Perry decided that it was worth taking a second look. I had to take everything out. So and, uh, we're gonna have to clean that booth up because uh, I don't know where the hell all that dust came from. Great. We'll have to get a shop back in here and clean it's clean really the booth great. up. Yeah. And then uh, clean the parts up and then uh, it give it another shot. Yeah. Small setback. <laughs> it's nice to have a pre-built booth, but you got to make sure it's clean before you start. We thought our paint wasn't mixed right, or we weren't sure what was going on. It was like strain strenuous of. Anyway, it's just really dusty in there. <laughs> So the dusty booth theory is incorrect, but we're about to figure that out and come to the proper conclusion. I wouldn't want to paint something that was finished part. Like we were considering painting the fuselage floor and stuff. And I'm not gonna do that until we have that nice and clean. You don't want dust in the air when you're trying to paint. I can see it all over the lens now. Anyway. There was so much dust in the air that it the paint took it out of the air and stuck it to the yeah, part. Yeah, look at look at all the paint. Look at all the damn dust. So, to the edge of the and you board. don't think there's any chance that this is somehow the paint itself turning into little no. strands? Oh, hell no. Maybe it is our paint landing on the mesh. Like turning into strands. It just seemed too much. There was so much <laughs> in the air. <laughs> All right, so I think we figured it out. Yeah. We, uh, we got our ratio wrong for the mix. That was what was happening. Yeah. For whatever reason, we went, we went one we went one ratio of paint to half of thinner. It was supposed to be one to one and a half. So there should have been equal part plus a half of the thinner. Sometimes two brains aren't better than one. That's a good good point for pilots too, is like if you got two pots on board, sometimes you end up with two passengers on board. Because one guy thinks the other guy's got it. And then nobody's got it. So yeah, two pilots just screwed up a very simple, I mean it's right there on the can. But we uh, were so busy thinking about filming and I didn't think about the math at all and I think Perry asked me to double check it and I just glanced at it. Yeah, I knew it. It was like, this has got to be the paint. It's coming out in like strands. Like, yeah, like, like just thick. It was like spraying. It was like silly string. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna take all these parts 
on the 4x8 outside where there's fresh air so we don't have to put full face respirators on to, uh, to clean up this mess. We're learning. Who knew? If I was smart, I'd be rich. What the hell? I guess that's one advantage to being too windy to fly today. We can do this toxic stuff outside and have the wind just blow, blow it away. Thank you. Alright, so we gotta make sure that we don't lose the part IDs. So my suggestion would be <clears throat> on this part here, yeah. clean it here and then put the part number. Clean it here, put the part number here, and then clean there. That yep. makes sense? Yep. I think also this is a good lesson of if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Whether you're flying or anything. Because I knew early, I was like, this doesn't, eh, what the hell? How can there be this much dust in the air? Greg and Jeff from Vans Aircraft made us feel better about this screw up. So you've had this problem before. If you uh, decide to flip that ratio, you're going to get a hairy spiderweb looking finish. Uh, you know the Flight Trops RV14 build? Mm -hmm. um, so they had a little uh, reducer no. primer. Yeah. It looks. What'd they do? I'll show you the video. <laughs> oh no, man. It looks, it looks exactly, it actually looks almost exactly like one time. There is one difference. <laughs> What's that? They didn't top coat theirs. Sorry. <laughs> Yours wasn't the first time. Theirs won't be the last time. You know what? It happens. It pays to read the can. Always read the can. It's a learning experience. All right, so I've got the right proportion now. <laughs> two parts primer. One times two is two. One and a half parts reducer. Two times one and a half is three, correct? Perfect. So that's a pretty big difference when it's mixed properly, eh? Yeah, it's going on really well. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I know I'm still behind in these build vlogs. They're not coming out as often as I wanted them to, and we're way ahead of where this footage shows us in the real world, so I'm gonna try to catch up. The good news is the massive burden that's been the instrument rating is finally out of the way. I got my flight test done literally two days before publishing this episode, so yeah, that's kind of surreal to say out loud. We'll be talking about that in a future episode. In the meantime, keep your flight chop sharp. All right, so what did we learn? Measure once, cut twice? No, that's not how that goes. <laughs> yeah, learn to read. <laughs>